Don't get me started by how hard it is to start or stay on track Or don't dream or do whether you want or want not to Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee with the guys from Not A Surf. I'm talking to Matthew right now about some guitars and amps. And I guess we'll start with uh, your Les Paul here. Yeah, this is, a, this is an Edwards. Edwards is a subsidiary of uh, ESP. Oh, okay. And these are Japanese. It's, um, Ooh, like it's, it's called a lawsuit guitar, yeah. that's right. Because, and if you don't know, lawsuit guitar means that you can't uh, export it or you can't export it from Japan because they'll have, get a lawsuit because it's such a perfect copy. Um, it's really great. It's, uh, it's very light and uh, I was lucky enough to go to Japan a couple times. I got it in Tokyo. You feel it. It feels good. Oh, now that's the last ball I yeah, can yeah. play every day. Yeah, yeah, Wow, yeah. that's different. Is it hollow or something? No, it's not hollow. They just wait for a... Uh, uh, they make a couple a month, I think, and they just wait for um, a piece of wood that feels right, right and, huh? and light. And uh, I love it. Have you modified anything to it? With the no, pipes no, it's totally, it's totally Do you stock. Do you know what they put in it? That's a great question. I wish I knew. I don't. Oh, huh, that's I'm so sorry. interesting. So obviously, other than the weight, yeah. uh, what do you prefer about it as opposed to a Les Paul? Uh, well, I have a, I have a, I have a '68 Black Beauty, '69. Sorry, I bought it as a '68. Turned out as '69. It's okay. I, I paid very little for it. I'm very <laughs> lucky. Um, but uh, I leave that home sometimes, sure, and so yeah. this is my main <laughs> thing when I travel with one. It's very loud acoustically. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah. it's, it, it, it's just very resonant very and, cool. uh, and feels really good. And then as far as gauges, are you running a pretty uh, standard 12s. Gauge? Oh, wow. You 12s got some with, with a, a plain 24. Okay, gotcha. Um, so you can still bend notes. Yeah, stuff, right? I think it's from all, these, all the years of being a trio. Um, it just felt like heavier strings. Fill it out. I, yeah, and I could play it more like an acoustic. Like I, I play really light picks, those Dunlop 60s, but I play really hard. And... Uh, and that's an okay combination, and I don't go too far out of tune. Well, that's awesome, man. That's a very, very interesting guitar. Yeah, yeah. And then you're playing the Guild as well on this yeah, tour, right? Yeah, I have a Gibson J200 that I've had for years. It got really beat up. Um, it's, you know, it had the neck crack three or four times <laughs> on planes. Uh, and, uh, and I saw this one day at um, Main Drag, which is a shop in Brooklyn that sure. I, I live near, and I want to give them props. I bought a lot of things from them, and they're a great, great store. Um, and this seemed like a J200, but more solid. Like gotcha. it's, it's just like, heavier wood, so I'm not as worried about traveling with it. Sure. So it's kind of, um, it's a real workhorse, uh, but I, I really I really love it, and now it's really my number one even at home. You mind if I pick it no, up please, please, please. show yeah, the yeah. back? Because it looks like uh, yeah. this thing has done some touring. Yeah. For sure. It's got a couple of, did, was that something that was repaired? I don't think I did that. It must have been before <laughs> I, I've, I've thankfully never really heard this yeah. one. And it's got some pretty incredible checking considering it's like a 90s. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh. I don't even know. Again, I think it's early 90s. I don't even know what year, but... Um, Man, that's awesome. Maybe it's seen a lot of sunlight. I'm not sure. And it's so... I guess this is... Is that considered a jumbo? That's a jumbo. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a big old body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to find gig bags for it. Um, <laughs> I bet. And I'm not the biggest guy, so it's kind of ridiculous. Like, I, it's not quite Angus like Young, but I'm like, I'm like holding a giant something. thing. So but, uh, cool. but I just like that sound. and. I was a really huge Who fan, so I love Pete Townsend, and totally, that's yeah. how I ended up with the J200, because I love that just rich bottom. Boomy yeah. thickness, yeah, yeah, yeah I love yeah, it too, yeah, man. Totally. And then you're running two amps, we got the yeah. Deluxe Reverb, right? Yeah, this is the uh, uh, Deluxe Reissue, you know, you, you can still get them. Um, it has a Jensen special design speaker in the back. They come with either just a standard Fender or a Jensen speaker, and the Jensen's way better, worth having. Um, I always run a hot plate. Oh, an attenuator? Yeah, an so attenuator. Is that to keep, uh, like, preserve kind of a lower stage volume, or is that... That's right. For okay. people who don't know, what an attenuator does is you can, turn, you can turn up to whatever volume makes the amp sound best and, and leave it at that heat, like the power tube's really working, Saturated, and yeah. bring down the actual volume. So it, it's a big resistor that goes between the, the head and the cabinet, so the brains and the uh, speaker. And we can't see it right now, but you're also running an 800, right? Yeah, that's off to the side. It's a Marshall JCM 800, 50 watt. Um, I've had for 20 years, uh, 212. Awesome yeah. Also with the hot plate, which is kind of ridiculous because you can turn down the master volume. But having the master volume hotter gives you that... A little more oomph, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and power tube distortion is somehow clearer. Right. It's always that, that ACDC idea of like, 
a lot of crunch and a lot of excitement, but but you can discern what the notes are. I've always felt like maybe like you know when they have a master volume, it's almost like the volume knob on your guitar where yeah. if you do roll it back it kind of loses a little special absolutely yeah yeah, yeah yeah you yeah lose, you lose you have some body yeah, yeah absolutely totally. yeah well very cool i guess that uh just leaves the pedals and you only yeah. have a couple so we'll take a look at it it's very simple this is considering the I, I feel like you guys cover a lot of sonic ground with your music yeah four pedals i mean three really that's kind of yeah incredible yeah. Well, this is a replacement for the one thing I've always used, which was a Hughes and Kettner Rotosphere. Right. And a, a Rotosphere is a Leslie speaker emulator. Um, but the Hughes and Kettner has a really big footprint and also uses a, a very particular um, adapter. Sure. So you can't run like one of these a one daisy spots. chain or something, yeah. right? Yeah. So I fi I've had like three of them and I've broken them, and so I finally settled on. On this as a replacement, which is totally totally fine. It's really really good. Does it? You feel like it does about the same job? Yeah, yeah. Cool. The Hughes Kettner has a tube, and I don't know if that's uh, you know placebo effect, and I'm like, oh, it's so warm, but but in fact, this is totally. Now, fine. can you run this stereo to separate? I do. Tabs? I run okay. it stereo, so so the the deluxe and the Marshall. So cool. it's got stereo. Sounds a lot like a wobble. Leslie. Sure. Yeah. Um, this OCD is just. Uh, I used to have a hot cake. I've tried different things. Is it just like super fuzz for if I want to? Do a solo, which isn't that often, mm -hmm. um, because Doug takes care of that a lot of time. But um, help you cut through the mix a little bit. Yeah, um, but what I really use all the time is this, and this is a Klon clone. So the Klon is a Centaur uh, pedal, or Klon. is Klon the company? Or Klon Centaur is the, the company, company, and Centaur is a pedal. But right. there's a lot of Klon clones. How did you? Undo I mean, you know, there's the Soul mm. Food. There's a million different ones. Huh? Right. I'm not sure who made it. My buddy uh, Tom Bojour who um, ran Revolver Magazine and who was at Guitar World for uh, 20 years. And I was a writer at Guitar World Very in cool. 1994 and 95. Um, and we're childhood friends. And uh, he's got a few of the clones. And he gifted this one to me because we used it on our uh, um, You Know Who You Are album. And I was looking for, for something, uh, something believable. It's believable in that it just sounds like you kind of got a bigger amp all of a sudden. Or, sure. or you turned your amp up. It, it, it doesn't. It's very musical and doesn't feel too much like a like a fuzz box. It really feels like just a yeah, yeah. like like an overdrive. So sure. That, are so you that, running it kind of hot? Are you? I'm not running it very hot. Uh, kind of low gain, middle tone, volume knobs falling off. But <laughs> yeah, I just I just set it and I reset it every night because you know electricity is different, different and it makes your sure. amps behave in new ways. Uh, I just set it so that when I hit step on it, it's a little louder. Gotcha. A little so more grit, a little like a louder. Clean boost, but that's just hitting the front of your amp. That's, right, but like yeah. I was saying before, I don't really have a clean tone uh, to to play clean. I just turn down a little bit or or play quieter. But both my amps are set at a kind of uh, edgy, kind of on the on the edge of super crunch, but definitely in a in a kind of yeah. breaking up area. Well, Matthew, I gotta say, you're my kind of rock star, a dude that can roll with three pedals right and on. a couple amps. <laughs> I think is, there's just something to be said for that because yeah, you know, yeah. the argument's always tone is in the hands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think cool. you've uh, you've got that all well, figured out, and I appreciate nice you lot. taking the time oh, to absolutely. talk it's to total us. Total pleasure. Man. Absolutely. All, all right. right, all right, guys. Now we're on kind of the other side of the stage with Doug over here. We're gonna talk his gear, and what I, I noticed when you were sound checking, you were playing that Les Paul quite a bit, and I didn't see this. Was this a 335? It's a 330. 330. From 1960. Okay. 1967. Oh wow! Um, I can't believe you toured with that. I bought it from Johnny Spampanato from X of NRBQ. Uh, but it's a 67, and uh, it's it has a special tuning. I use it on one song that we call oh. New Bird. Just it's it's uh, drop D, and the Bs are both the same. Two Bs on the top. Interesting. Because um, I play a special kind of tuning on that song. Uh, and it's here for that, but I use it. I use it at home a lot to record with standard and everything. And sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful looking git fiddle for sure. Have you modded it at all, or are those no, the original pickups? I haven't. Um, I don't know what happened to it before I, I sure. got it a couple years ago. Uh, that's not an original pick guard. I know that. <laughs> not the uh, other world. But yeah, uh, and I played also. Ira, the drummer, and I are in a. a vintage Beatles band called Bambi Keen on. We do the Hamburg stuff in the, that they did in the club, so I use that for that. Too. Very cool. But and then you're also rolling with a Les Paul here. Yeah, this is my my second Les Paul. Um, I have a black one that I've had since I was 18. Um, that's with, I, I play in it also in the band Guided by Voices. Yeah. Uh, so that's with, with the Guided by Voices crew right now. Uh, but this is also really good for not a surf. It's a 73 and it's uh, real singy. Something about it is very, Good on the high end and uh, 
It's kind of bell-like. And then, not what I expected, but you're running this dual wreck, Roadster, huh? Yeah, it's actually a Roadster, um, and I just got it a couple weeks ago, and it has like, whoa. You know, if <laughs> you put a... wheels on this, you could like, You can skate it. Yeah. Skateboard, but, uh, or surf, maybe. Boogie board, no. Um, but luckily, they didn't skimp, they didn't uh, make it shorter because I've stepped on two of these at the same time before. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Not good. Channel. Huh? It has four channels. You can choose 100 watt or 50 watt in the back for mm. each channel. I oh, know it's a little. Oh, that's interesting. It's a little learning intensive when you first get an amp like this. But did it take you a while to get it dialed in? I mean, what are yeah, you normally kind of. Playing? I'm still dialing it in, but um, a dual rectifier. Oh, just. And okay. that's with the uh, guided by voices. Um, and so I got this, and I'm really liking it as well. It's like a 2012 Roadster. And someone had put chicken head knobs on it, which I, I like, instead of the Mesa metal. Metal ones, yeah, ones. I love those knobs, yeah. Um, the favorite thing I like about Mesa, though, the reason I get them is because of the solo channel. Any channel you're on, it boosts it. Sure. Whatever, so if you need to come up for any kind of lead, you can just get on up yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's really, the solo channels are, I haven't found a clean boost pedal or anything like that that can Does do the same that. thing. So, and as far as the cab, is that a Mesa cab or? It is. Um, I've had that since I've had been playing Mesa's since like '99 or something. My manager saw and got it by voices. Saw um, Paige Hamilton from Helmet wheeling yeah. it into a store, and he used it, <laughs> so he got it right away. That was Paige's. Yeah, that's a trip. <laughs> I don't know how long he had it or anything. I've never talked to him about it, but um, um, any yeah, idea that was, that was what speakers are in it? I haven't opened it up in a long time. I can't remember. <laughs> It sounded great during sound check. Oh, thanks. That's all, that can, that's all that matters. Yeah. And then right here's your, your pedal setup. All right, so you got a couple more pedals than Matthew, but not too, too many. Why don't you walk me through the signal chain? Well, um, TC Electronic Tuner. Um, I thought I would buy it to use it for the polytune uh, capabilities it has, and I don't really, I just use it as a tuner. Tuner. It could be a boss tuner too, but I that's like TC had. stuff. Um, Got a couple EQs, which I use as small boosts. Oh, okay. I was gonna. I was gonna. I EQ'd a little bit, but they're just kind of small boost, bigger boost. Uh, sparkle drive from Voodoo Labs. Which I'm uh, learning is really great for like slightly clean, but also a little bit gritty sound. Um, I'm not using this in the chain right now. I use that when I'm with Guided by Voices, the Flander. Um, this is a chorus. Um, I tape these so they don't move. Move, um, sure. <laughs> by TC. Uh, it comes in handy. I just got this Harmonist from a friend. He let me borrow it, and so I bought him another one, so I kept this one. Ha, uh, you like that um, one? <laughs> it's, I, I, use it, I don't use it as a pitch shifter. I use it for the slide feature. You can kind of go up and down. You can go three octaves, one octave, and you go down octaves. Almost like a, like a whammy pedal? It is kind of like that. Oh, okay. Or, and it also has the, the pitch shift modulation yeah, yeah. if you want to use it for that. But it's it's pretty crazy pedal. I like this Alter Ego Delay by TC. Um, I like the reverse delay. Yeah, that's fun. I don't use that much with Not A Surf, but I record with that a lot. Yeah, that's a, I love that pedal, man. That's a great one. And I kind of use these delay settings here. And the old Holy Grail. Sure. Nano. Tried and true. Um, nice reverb. Um, oh, this nut it needs tightening. Wow, <laughs> I'm glad I felt that. And then we got a mystery pedal okay, over here. Okay, this, I was saving that for last. That was made by a guy named John Landgraf. It's a Landgraf Dynamic Overdrive. And it was given to me when I was in Guided by Voices in, down in Florida back in 2000 doing a show or 2001 uh, by a fan who knew this guy. And I thought, wow, this is great, a boutique distortion. Well, I'm probably not going to use it now. So it sat in a box for a long time, for many years. And the other year I kind of whipped it out and like, man, this sound, thing sounds great. Awesome, huh? Um, and he was from Pensacola and fortunately he passed away and I didn't get a chance to talk to him or thank him. And I found out on forums that it's kind of sought after. This guy made handmade these um, overdrives, and had a had a friend paint them too. Yeah, the paint job looks cool. Super cool. I probably shouldn't even be using it. <laughs> um, and on the back, it's, it says he signed it. He didn't really sign it, but land grant and some yeah. pedals, huh? Where yes, Jesus yes. is Lord. <laughs> it has my name, so it's kind of a Christian overdrive pedal. That's awesome. And if you take the the back plate off, there's writing on the inside too, in like a gold. Gold like sharpie, sharpie or, something. or something. And then do you know what the so, little switch does? Is that like a fat switch? Kind yeah, of? yeah, it's like fat and thin. Um, I think that's the fattest. I kind of keep it torqued up there. Is this something you have on kind of consistently? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I, I use it for like when I need just a little more juice, a little more, um, not loudness, but more gain. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. More drivey so things. A little I more put this Radio Shack knob on myself. I had one of these. <laughs> I thought that would be good for the volume. So yeah, um, I do like that pedal a lot. It sounds amazing. Man, that's not a bad so setup. So right now, that's what I'm using. Let me get that for you. Well, I can't uh, tell you how much we appreciate you guys taking the time. I know you guys are kind of pressed, but um, hey, I had a. Well, it's, it's fun. Yeah. It was. So it was. This is a very interesting for me. I'm a. I'm a well, it's huge an honor fan of to you, be. Man. Yeah. It's an honor to be able to do this. Well, thanks a lot, man. I yeah, appreciate thanks, it. Guys. Hey guys. Appreciate stay tuned for the next rig rundown. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.